like you to reflect on how you were taught math in high school. Was, do you have any prominent memories? Are they positive or negative? <laughs> Indicate to me using your hand your level of engagement in high school math. Five being that you were highly engaged and zero being that you were completely disengaged. This is why I'm here today. I started teaching math in Jasper, Alberta five years ago. And during that time, I realized my young adult years had drastically changed. I had to be selective about where to socialize with my peers. And I never thought that they would be interested in talking about math. But often, when I told them I was a math teacher, they started reflecting on their horrible experiences. As a teacher, I've realized that there's a large amount of people out there who believe they're incapable of math. And I've taken this opportunity to shift that and ensure that we can make our students believe that math is a useful thing for them. I need to ensure that my students don't feel like math is not valuable and that it's a waste of their time. And as teachers, the experiences we provide our students with and the way we teach must prepare them for today and tomorrow. To do this, we need to ensure that our classes don't look like the 1960s. We need to ensure we don't teach through direct instruction majority of the time. And that our students don't sit passively, disengaged, with little interaction. And so today I'm here to share with you my experiences so far in shifting this perspective on math. I compare it to hiking the chief. I spend a lot of time thinking about it, need support from my friends and colleagues to actually go do it. And when I do it, my heart rate's increased and it's uncomfortable at times, but it's totally worth the views. So I keep doing it. Some of those views are from teaching an entire math unit through student-centered lessons. We engage the students in problem sets, which challenge them to solve problems in their own unique ways alongside hands-on activities to deeper their thinking and allow them to learn through discovery. As teachers, we stepped off the podium and transitioned to coaching our students. Our role became the guides of active learning. This allowed us to question our students and evaluate their understanding on the spot and encourage them to have deeper thinking. They liked it. They had fun, they were engaged, and they, it was more desirable to come to class. Here my students looked at a water slide project. They developed models. They had to make them aesthetically pleasing and mathematically informative. Their goal was to use their math skills as well as their creativity to convince a water slide company to invest in their ideas. They were able to use a variety of the math learning outcomes from Math 10, and they had the chance to work collaboratively towards a goal, which was challenging. Students started to seek out math in the areas that they were passionate about, and they used the projects as opportunities to further advance their skills, like graphic design. Here a student looks at the requirements for going to Playland and expresses her understanding of inequalities through a poster. Another student, his experience and his passion for skiing, he looked into what was required to go on a heli ski tour. I let students answer their questions. Why are we learning about exponents? This is a waste of time. So they researched. They researched the importance. They found areas where they were useful. And they educated the class about, um, about how they were used in those areas. Their questions led to us to go and investigate. When students asked me why we're learning radical equations, I didn't quite know at first. <laughs> so I did some research, and we were able to find that doctors use it to calculate body surface area and determine the dosage of chemotherapy to give a patient. This deepened my students' appreciation for the content they were learning. It made them believe that what they were learning is actually going to maybe be used, at least by someone in their lives at some point. 
we did big investigations. They, they got can, cans of food and they calculated the radius that would create the least amount of surface area for a specific volume of food. They found that most cans were not using that radius. And that sparked a lot of questions. Like, why are the companies wasting money, wasting resources, and, to use, and using more aluminum than needed? So at the end, I realized we're at the beginning, and we had to go further. So I Skyped with an individual who's worked in the field of container design for a very long time. And he answered most of their questions, as well as exposed them to a thriving career field. Students here had the chance to show their skills of solving an algebra equation, algebraically as well as visually. They had the chance to challenge themselves by choosing the equation they wanted to use, like just positive numbers or go into the, the negatives and have to represent that situation. The most exciting part about this assignment was that every student said they liked the algebraic method better. And to have 50 students tell me that algebra is actually useful and efficient was like my dream come true. <laughs> they worked on a Dragon's End project where they looked at um, exposing their understanding of linear relations at, in a meaningful way. They got to be creative and develop something they wanted to sell. They had to make a pitch. They had to create their audience to be engaged and want to invest in their company. And they did that through exposing the revenues they would make in a table of values, graph, and equation. Students forgot they were doing math here. They started using math to get their point across and be heard. Here, a student realizes that geometric sequences exist in population growth. She creates a general term equation using researched information and data off the internet and calculates the population of India in 2020, or at least the prediction. And from there, she starts reflecting on the serious consequences of overpopulation. The students started thinking about the math and using it to prepare for the future. In a similar example on an individual level versus global, this student looks at arithmetic sequences and calculates the total he'll have paid by the end of a contract with a cell phone. <laughs> he had the chance to realize that he'd pay about $3,000 over the course of three years and determine whether that was a worthwhile investment. Thanks to Dan Mayer, math teachers around the world have access to amazing videos and pictures that provide real world problems for students. One that we looked at this year was, does the shower or bath use more water? They were able to research and have class discussions about water conservation, as well as evaluate their own water usage and compare it to the class, as well as globally. They were shocked to find out that in some impoverished areas, one bucket of water is used for a shower, reused for laundry, and then reused again for mopping the floor. This made the students evaluate their behaviors and make decisions that could positively impact the environment. We need to embrace this opportunity and start taking steps towards inspiring a love for, or at least a curiosity about math. As teachers, we have to model these characteristics and provide opportunities for our students to demonstrate them. And in doing so, we are preparing our students for today and tomorrow. So I ask you to join me on this journey and share your experiences, and I promise that the time put in and the challenges we face are completely worth the views. Thank you.